Hey, hey, this is Tash Street with Positive Out Loud. Today I have a very cool guest on the show. I have Ramona Gailey, and she is a channeled mentor, and she helps the advanced law practitioner, attraction practitioners. She works with people who have a burning desire to live more in accordance with the law of attraction principles and who want to improve the results they're getting in their lives. Thank you so much, Ramona, for being on uh, Positive Out Loud. Appreciate you being here. Can Thank you, tell- you, Taz. I'm really honored yeah. to be here. Really glad to. Thank you. Um, can you tell people a little bit about how this kind of all started for you? What maybe some kind of challenges you've gone through to come to the other side of how this all kind of evolved? Well, I guess my my spiritual journey started about five years ago, right after my partner, uh, life partner of 23 years, had just passed away, and I wasn't doing too well. I didn't have any real paradigms of any you know spiritual beliefs, and I was. Uh, planning my suicide and the phone rang and it was a good friend and she said whoa 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 you have to stop talking like that thinking like that and I said well I don't know how and so she told me about Abraham Hicks and that's Esther Hicks receiving Abraham and they've been doing that for like 30 or 40 years or something and I started listening and I immediately saw that it was going to give me the hope and the um, the ability to change the way I was thinking and the way I was feeling and the results I was getting in my life. So I started really immersing myself in that and never dreamed that I would be actually doing the same thing at some point later on because Abraham's famous for saying that the reason Esther is so good at it is because she was kind of a blank slate. She didn't have any strong opinions. <laughs> and I'm known oh. for my strong opinions. <laughs> so <laughs> I, never, uh, I never thought that I would be able to do it, although they say anybody can do it. And, and now, of course, I agree. But um, yeah, back in April of this year, I was actually at an Abraham Hicks uh, workshop in Asheville, and I was with a good friend, and we were hiking, and and she told me all about all these amazing things that was happening her that were happening in her life, and um, around channeling. And so, just by the end of the day, for some reason, I just found myself saying, "Well, I'm going to do that. That's that's mm-hmm. me. That's for me. I want that." And I didn't think anything more of it. And then the next weekend, I um, told some friends that. Uh, that I had had this conversation and this realization and they said, Oh, because they're longtime Abrahamers too. And so they said, Oh, well channel for us right now. And I was like, right now <laughs> so <laughs> I did. And it went great. And I started doing it for friends and just anybody who wanted to. And then I started working with a really great coach that works with emerging intuitives and uh, his name's Kevin Young. And he kind of got me a little bit started and then it just kind of took off and it's been it's been quite the ride. And every time I receive Oprah on behalf of anybody else, I get the healing energy. I get the uh, inspirations. I get the education, the, the awareness, the mm-hmm. understanding that they're sharing with that person. And so it's been a tremendously healing um, experience for me and continues to be so. I mean, every time I, I receive I, I derive the benefit. So I, yeah, I like to tell people it's a purely selfish act. <laughs> but, uh, but I also do recognize that because Esther Hicks basically saved my life with her work, I like to pay it forward and um, help anybody else who needs or wants um, some sort of a big transformation in their life and getting better results, getting more of what they want, because I really believe we're all here to really thoroughly enjoy life. And mm-hmm, so that's mm-hmm. what I'm about. Absolutely. Yes. Um, So when you were going through those dark phases in your life and you decided um, somebody introduced, you know, uh, Abraham Hicks to you. So how did that first evolve for you? What, What was it that you were doing in order to get through that process? So Lordell is the name of the friend that called. She told me to go and get two different books, Asking It Is Given and Getting Mm -hmm. Into the Vortex. And then she just happened to have a box of CDs. She'd been listening to the subscription series, which sends you two CDs a month uh, for like 25 years. And so she usually would give them away, but she just happened to have a box of about 50 CDs in her closet. And so she pulled it out and she mailed them to me. So that's where I started. I started with those two books and the Getting Into the Vortex book has a CD in the back of it that has guided meditations that are dictated actually by Abraham. And so I listened to the meditations every day and I read both books cover to cover a couple of times and I started practicing all the, uh, it's full of exercises, um, asking it is given is full of 22 different processes, they call them, that you can do to start feeling better right away and between that and listening to the cds which just happened to be 
to cover the year before and the year after Jerry's death. And so I got to get to know Jerry and get to mm-hmm. know Esther and then go through that passing away mm-hmm. and um, see Esther come out the other end. And she just immediately became my hero and my role model. And mm-hmm. I knew that if she could do it, I could do it. And so that gave me hope. And hope really is all any of us need when we're really on those lower vibrations. All we need is a little hope and then a little bit of skill to know how to climb mm-hmm. up, out, up out of that hole, how to climb the, the, every rung of the ladder, as I think of it, coming up the vibrational scale until we're up into joy and ecstasy and contentment and satisfaction. And so when you look at where you are now compared to where even before your partner passed away, do you think that you are in a different level right in the vibration now? Because of oh, this? yeah. Okay. Oh, I was, I was a relatively low vibration. I mean, maybe not relative to the average person. I, was, I, 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 I loved my partner and we had a very wonderful relationship and mm-hmm. um, I'd had a lot of really great things happen in my life. I was doing what I love for the most part. But uh, compared to anything I experienced now, I was very low vibration. I didn't know how to control my thoughts. I knew that my feelings were coming from my thoughts. I, th- I think I would have known that if you'd asked me, but I didn't know how to control my thoughts. And now uh, I know exactly what to do with any thought or any feeling. If it's not what I want, I know exactly what to do to get more of what I do want. So, yeah. Speaking of the thoughts, <laughs> those dreaded thoughts. Yeah. Um, when there's like a feeling like, you know, you start feeling like maybe a little irritated, a little angry or whatever. What is it that, what's the first step that you would do in that process just for the listeners out there? Change your focus. Most of us don't ever learn how to know even what we're focusing on and certainly Mm -hmm. not how to change the focus. So just like if you were using a camera and looking through the lens and you saw something you didn't want, you could simply turn away and focus it on something else that Mm -hmm. is prettier or or, uh, more inspiring. And that's exactly what you can do. You can focus away from anything that's causing any discomfort and any unwanted thoughts and focus towards anything it can be kittens it could be penguins it could be (laughs) elephants it could be the sun you know frequently i'll look out the sky out the window at the sky and the clouds and just derive inspiration from that as i'm as i'm writing or as i'm thinking about something because it's inspirational and because it feels good and so Mm -hmm. if you just follow what feels good and be willing to change your focus away from something that doesn't feel good towards something that feels better that's it I mean, you know, we can pretty much end the talk right now. That's the entire thing. That's it. <laughs> Simple as that. <laughs> it is. I know it sounds simplistic, but it's it's really true, and I'm living proof. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I totally believe that. It's like, just do what you love, right? If you like to dance, if you like to go on walks, if you, you know, like to go swimming, whatever it is. Absolutely. But you're right. If you're like, if you're at work or you're at home and you're kind of, you know, you're there, just focus on something that makes you feel good. Like yeah. You said. yeah. And so many people will say, well, I have to focus on politics or the news. I have to be informed about <laughs> what's going on in the world. And to which I say, no, you don't. I'm not. Because it, it's going to come to you anyway, somehow or form or another. You'll, you'll know. If, if yeah, you need if there's to know. something I need to know. My inner being or source or God or whatever you want to call it knows a lot more than anybody who's running a news station knows. And so my, my feelings guide me to what I need to do in order for me to be the happiest that I can be at all times. And my job is to listen mm-hmm. and to pay attention and choose where I'm focusing so right. that I can hear those voices. Right. Absolutely. So, yeah. so you pretty much studied through that for about five years or? Yeah, it it's been just, just over five years since she passed away. And right. that phone call came one week after her death. So, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. That was so amazing that your friend did that for you and got you through yes. that process, right? Yes. I you were, tell her but she you saved were, my life. <laughs> you, you were open for that too, so losing the love of my life my soulmate what i considered to be the only known source of unconditional love is what i thought at the time Mm -hmm. broke me wide open i mean i was i knew my life depended on on something you know but i didn't know what and when she called you know lordella just happened to be probably the only person on the planet that i could have really really opened to and listened to because her husband, her beloved Bert, her husband had died just several years before that, suddenly, and um, 
And she came through that so with such peace. And so I, I knew that she knew where I was coming from because she had been through that. And I also knew that she knew something that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And so I listened and it was all, you know, synchronicity or, or source guidance or however you want to call it. It doesn't really matter to me what we call it, but it was palpable. And especially looking back on it, I can see a very clear path for me being laid. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit about how does it feel now? Like when you're actually are doing the channeling, do you actually, uh, do you remember what's being said? Do, do you know, do, do you get like the, the knowledge and the wisdom from that as you're doing it? Yes and no. I feel it, what it feels like to me is a really deep, relaxing meditation. My mm -hmm. body be, gets very, not numb, but um, very relaxed. You know, like those muscle relaxation exercises, if you've ever done one of those, it feels kind of like that. Mm -hmm. And yet I feel very alert. I feel like I'm present in the conversation. And at the end of a session, I'll say, oh, that was a really great session. That was a lot of fun. And, and I'll feel like I remembered everything that we said. But then when I think, when I listen back to the recording, I didn't remember all of it. Mm -hmm. I remember anywhere between 50 and 75% of it, but some of it, um, I don't remember. And it's been pretty consistently like that f for quite a while um i don't know how much esther remembers of what she's doing i've heard different reports at different times from different people but so mm -hmm. i don't know how much it's similar to her but that's the way it feels to me it's like i feel like i'm aware and the only thing i'm really thinking about me personally the human is staying out of the way my job is to be as completely relaxed and as non-opinionated and non-present as possible and just let whatever the message is come through so if someone asks something about which Ramona has a very strong opinion, sometimes Oprah has to wait for Ramona to be quiet. <laughs> it's, it's, it has literally happened like that probably maybe three or four times where they've actually said to the person that ask, is asking the questions, we're waiting for, Ramona has an opinion about this and we're waiting for her to decide. <laughs> yeah, so it's That's kind of fascinating, funny. yeah. Um, so what was it that, that, that made you that you want to do this uh, to begin with? Is there just something that just kind of, you're like, I just want to do that. Was there a moment? Was that a decision or? Well, was, like I said, when I was working, walking in the woods with my friend, uh -huh. Shannon, and she was telling me about it, it was a, I would call it a feeling of a knowing okay. as opposed to a deciding, which would be more like in your mind. Mm -hmm. But you know how you just know something sometimes? That's the way it felt. It was almost like I had had already done it, even though I didn't have any, memory of having done it or any physical familiarity with what it would feel like but there was a knowing i guess maybe in my heart is where i would say it was mm -hmm. that this was something that i could do and that i wanted to do and therefore i would do but it wasn't like okay i'm going to do it in 4.2 days or i'm going to do it tonight at eight o'clock or i had no idea how it was going to unfold but see i had practiced following the the principles taught by abraham hicks i'd practiced them for almost five years at that it was about four and a half years because mm -hmm. uh, that was just this last april and um so i knew how to follow my inspirations well enough that this just was a clearly stated clearly felt inspiration and i trusted it and mm -hmm. i didn't think anything more of it really wow it's amazing yeah, so it just was unfolded so you said you had no spiritual type of background or anything before this none. or no religious, none, no, nothing like that? I had tried all the religions. I, I used to be a professional trumpet player. That was my first career. So I'd played a lot of church services. And so I'd been to, exposed to a lot of religious messages. Mm -hmm. And I had even sought out uh, like, um, you know, friends meetings with, with the Quakers or friends, however you call that. I'd been to um, some Buddhist uh, in, you know, type influenced things. Mm -hmm. um, I'd been to the Unity Church, which was the closest to, to what I thought maybe I could believe, but um, just for various logistical reasons, it just never happened. And I didn't, I didn't feel the stronging, the, the, uh, the pull that strongly. Right. So I had no paradigm, no religious beliefs. I've got two uh, born again siblings and I've talked to them a fair amount about it, but and I've actually tried to to be a Christian, and I just I just couldn't. So right, right. I was a I was a blank slate when it came to this, 
and um, I'm really glad now that I that I was because I think mm-hmm. that I was able I was very fortunate because I was able to just really absorb it and immerse myself in it in a way that maybe I couldn't have a year before or a year later so it was perfect timing I totally get that because I grew up the same way just my mom just let me go with friends to different she never like took me to mm-hmm. she wasn't like a church person so she right. just let me try different things out and yeah. I was just kind of open to whatever. And that, that's kind of how I've been most of my life. Thanks. Thanks to that. My upbringing. So cool. that's great. Right. Yeah. It's like, I think, cause if you get stuck in a, in a, in a set belief pattern and this is the way and the only way, then there's all these other possibilities can't happen for you. Right. Yeah. Well, and it's so interesting because my parents, when I was very young, they actually did take us to a Methodist church, mm-hmm. but I felt so, unfitting in so alienated that I actually instead of going to the Sunday school class I would go and hide in the ladies room (laughs) and then go and join (laughs) my parents at the end and so there was a there was a definite rejection is probably too strong of a word but there was a resistance in me from the beginning against organized religion Hmm. and um and I wouldn't call it a resistance now I I really focus every day on making sure that any resistance that comes up I let go of so no matter what it is so mm-hmm. so I wouldn't describe it now as a resistance but I de- it just definitely did not resonate with me whereas Abraham Hicks resonated like nothing had ever before and like nothing has ever since until Oprah I've looked at some of the other people that are channels or however mm-hmm. you want to call it you know Esther doesn't actually call herself a channel and um, so I've looked at a lot of the other ones and I've just never heard or felt anybody else that really resonated the way the way Esther and Abraham do for me and now Oprah well oh, Esther is just so widely known I mean all over the world right just yes been around for many many years and yeah I've, I've started listening you know it's it, probably for many years but lately I would say this past year I've been listening to Esther mostly every morning on the way to work on the car because yeah. you know there's so many YouTube videos out there Yes. And it just puts you in, puts me in that right state frame of mind before I get to work and start yes. the day. And I think it's such a wonderful th- and wonderful. Every, every time you listen to Abraham, it's such a wonderful message. It just, yeah. So powerful. Yeah. Yes. Very powerful. Very positive. Very uplifting. Very, it makes sense. You know, mm-hmm, even mm-hmm. when I, even when I first started listening and I didn't completely understand what they were saying, they still resonated in some sort of a knowing way. That's kind of hard to describe. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So what is your, um, wh- what are you doing now for people? How are you helping people with Oprah? Well, I do private sessions. I do half okay. hour and full hour sessions for people. And we meet j- just the way you and I are on Zoom, on the internet. Mm-hmm. I've done very few actual in-person sessions. I've done maybe three or four over the six months. And I'm also putting together a course. I haven't released it yet, but it'll come out sometime next year. And I've built a website and, and created some very light, you know, educational type materials that are free, you know, that just people can sign up for. And I'm, and I intend to, to create a lot more of those types of things. And I, I just, I would say probably maybe one out of three or four people that come to me end up uh, coming back quite a few times and, and just they get remarkable results because I was, I was a life coach for a while and I I still consider myself a life coach, but I don't do any actual one-on-one coaching right now, but Mm -hmm. I'm using all of my knowledge and my experience in putting together the course. But life coaching for me was not nearly as effective when I'm receiving Oprah. Oprah can actually, can actually read the person's, the questioner's vibration and give them feedback and suggestions based specifically on them not just on the general principles but you know the reason you're struggling with this is because of this or we sense that or or and that kind of personalized information coupled with just absorbing the vibration of oprah because oprah is a very high vibration and just by us being together for an hour Mm -hmm. people end it and just say wow i've just never felt like this before and Mm -hmm. it's you know esther says at the beginning of every cruise you know, we've, we've created as positive an environment for you as we can. We'll be here for seven, 10 or 12 days <laughs> and absorb it, you know, let it, let it be a consistent reminder. And by the time you've done something three or four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 times, then you really get it. 
you get it at mm -hmm. a feeling level, which is, of course, where we're always looking to get. And so and that's what I see the clients of Oprah's getting, that um, exposure to and absorption of their higher vibration is as beneficial as probably any conversation that we're having. And uh, they just get tremendous results. I've seen people that have been very successful people who have been just blocked in one area of their life, maybe because of some deep emotional, mm -hmm. whatever, history, and, and it's healing. And they are able to uh, move on and accomplish incredible things. So it's really very beautiful. Well, yeah, they, you know, I know they say out there that if you hang around higher vibrational beings, that that can get you there pretty quickly. Absolutely. Right? Right. <laughs> Absolutely. And lucky you, you get to do it all the time. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm telling you, it's a totally, uh, <laughs> it's a totally self selfish act on my part, but I also right. just really enjoy the benefits that everybody right. else is getting too. So. so what's this course you're putting together? Can you give us a little bit of a, you know? It's a, it's a course uh, designed for advanced law of attraction practitioners. Okay. It's all of the little things. In other words, anybody who starts, as you know, as soon as you start following, let's say Abraham Hicks, and you start making some changes in your life, and you start choosing how you're focusing, and you start choosing to feel better, everything gets better. Everything mm -hmm. gets better mm -hmm. pretty quickly, remarkably so. And you do, do that for a while. And at some point, many of us, including me uh, in, in the past, reach a kind of a plateau where we're like, okay, I've done everything. I understand all the principles. There's no big questions left. I know what I'm supposed to do. And either I'm doing it and I'm not getting the results I want, or I'm not doing it and I don't know why. At that point, mm -hmm. that's where I want you. <laughs> because I've got the answers. <laughs> or I should say right. Oprah has the answers. <laughs> and that's where the practice changes just a little bit. The, the, the perspective on the various principles kind of change. And it's, it's easy to, and I, I wouldn't say everybody does this, but I, it's easy for us to start assuming that because we, com because we come in at one level and we mm -hmm. rise to a higher level mm -hmm. through the processes that we're doing, it's easy to continue to think about the processes kind of from this level because that's where we came in at. The same process or the same concept approached from the higher level can actually take you much higher and so it's just little tiny tweaks in focus little tiny uh changes in the angles or the or the ideas that we're using to look at things it's it's subtle work but it reaps huge rewards so when um what exactly is oprah is that like a is oprah a, a more than one being or is it just one being how how what exactly is, is oprah they refer to themselves as a they and a we. Okay. And I perceive them as a single voice, mm -hmm. but not like a one person voice, just a unified voice. I don't have any sense, you know, like if you listen to, um, to Abraham much, they'll talk about the fact that, that they are a uh, ever changing group of entities that can't be counted like you know in other words the summoner summons whatever the answer is and whoever's answering and they make it sound like there could be three or there could be a hundred or it could be a thousand and and i don't know if esther actually perceives it that way or not i do not perceive oprah as being different in any given time in terms of who and what they are just in terms of the strength of the summoning determines the strength of the answer so when I'm talking, when Oprah is talking with someone who is summoning great love, someone who's really feeling unloved or unlovable and really is seeking that, you know, strong level of love, the amount of love that Oprah sends through me is huge. It's overwhelming. It makes me cry and I can't breathe and I tremble and, you know, and, and it's very, very strong. At other times, if somebody's asking a question like, well, you know, why do why do some people have curly hair and some people have straight hair or whatever the question, you know, like the idle curiosity questions, you know, are there really UFOs? I mean, uh, idle questions that aren't, aren't really deeply personal. They summon rather less strong answers. Mm -hmm. They're, they're kind of obvious sort of um, neutral sort of answers. So it really depends on the summoner, more than any difference, I think, about who or what Oprah is. And, um, you know, who or what Oprah is is the same question, who or what is Abraham? Is it really Esther's 
deep subconscious? Is it really, you know, aliens, you know, someplace that have a form <laughs> somewhere? Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I happen to believe that it's just source. It's just the power of the universe that mm -hmm. is being summoned. And, um, and I think that's what Abraham is. And that's what I think Oprah is. But that's it's kind of like when you, yeah, that. like, like when you listen to Eckhart Tolle, it's that same type of like wise, deep, you know, loving space of being this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, I, was, I had one question that just totally left my mind. Okay. <laughs> so should we you bring Oprah about? Sure. Okay. Oh, yeah, cool. absolutely. I'll go get awesome. Oprah. I'll All see right, you thanks. later. All right. Greetings. Hi, Oprah. How are you? <laughs> we are always well. Mm -hmm. I had a few questions for you. I'm going to start with something that a lot of the listeners probably have questions about as well. So um, what's the easiest way to work through limiting beliefs that you may have? in order to identify a self-limiting belief, you must know how it makes you feel. If it makes you feel good, it is not limiting. If you do not feel good when you think it, it is limiting. So the best way to deal with any form of resistance, which is what a self-limiting belief is, is to learn to identify how you are feeling and to be willing to choose to feel better. And As then, you choose to feel better, okay. you will choose to focus away from the trigger of the limiting belief. If someone calls you ugly and you believe you are ugly, you can turn away from that and say, I see so much beauty in the world. I see beauty in the trees. I see beauty in the clouds and the flowers. I choose to believe something different about myself too because I am here, part of this universe, and we are all beautiful. Sometimes the feelings are overwhelming for people or and it's hard to look the other way. Is there... Any advice on that? When a feeling is so overwhelming that you cannot see the thought behind it, it's almost like you have a block. Here's the feeling and here's the thought, but you cannot see it because this feeling is blocking it. It is so big and so overwhelming. You must soothe. You must soothe until you can see the thought. And then you can choose a different thought. You may soothe by breathing, by meditating, by playing with a baby, animal or human of any description, <laughs> by taking a long walk outside, taking a long hot bath, anything that will soothe you. Until you are soothed, you are not likely to have much success trying to control your thoughts. So it's about loving yourself first. Yes, always. Mm -hmm. First, second, third, fourth, <laughs> last, and always. <laughs> awesome. Um, so when you're feeling that negative emotion, how do you address it? Do you, the first step again would be to, if you can, to look the other way. But then you said also to, to soothe it. So I think we answered that. I don't need to. I, that's a crazy question, right? <laughs> um, so do you think that there are emotional blocks within people that um, 
they, they just keep getting triggered and going back to that same emotion when something happens to them. And, and uh, what's a good way to, to release those blocks? It's the same answer. Same answer. Okay. Something that many humans do is perceive something from their past mm-hmm. as hanging on to them or they are hanging on to it. And once you have the understanding that you are actually bringing that past into your present right now, you are doing it. You are doing it. You are doing it. And as you become willing to stop doing that, it falls away very quickly because it is in the past. It is gone. It is not here. It does not exist any longer Mm -hmm. unless you bring it with you. So can we talk a little bit about addictions when somebody's addicted to, say, sugar, food, alcohol, that sort of thing? How, and they don't really even notice that they're going for that thing. I don't know. What's the best way to help somebody in that, in that predicament, the addiction process? The so-called addiction is an acclimation You must feed it to keep it acclimated. Mm -hmm. As you let go of it in alignment, it will fade. If you try to let go of it by wrestling with it, by arguing with it, by defending it, by blaming it, you will keep it near you you will continue to reignite that vibration. But as you choose better feeling thoughts, as you look away from anything that is unwanted, the unwanted falls away very easily, very smoothly. This is true with any acclimation. Mm. Yeah, just when I chose to look away of when I was drinking in the past, it, it fell away. Yes. I started looking, focusing on other things. Correct. Yeah, I get that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Um, for me, I'm having an issue with wanting, I want to move my body more. I want to exercise. And I keep getting back into that habit of not, of making of excuses of not doing it. Do you enjoy what you want to do? Do you enjoy it? Um, Depends on what it is. (laughs) Find only activities that you enjoy. Hmm. If you do not enjoy it, forcing yourself to do it will either not work or it will feel awful and then it will not work and then it will feel awful, and then it will not work, and it will feel awful. Mm -hmm. Choose games. Choose groups. Choose self-expression, dance, all the different forms of movement that are part of your joy. Movement is always part of your joy but find joyful movement Mm -hmm. to join the two together. That's why most people don't like to exercise because a lot of it's like drudgery to them, right? They just stop. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If you will make a decision to focus only on that which gives you joy to the best of your ability every single day in every single subject, you will find yourself feeling miraculously better very quickly no matter where you are coming from Mm -hmm. thank you yes i think that's all the questions i have you are complete yes thank you so much yes we are complete good all right (laughs) that was fun 
yeah, I definitely felt the energy of that. I felt I could feel it in my body. It was like it was um, electricity. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Like that, a do high you, do vibration. You that's what a really great meditation kind of feels like too. Like you're so mm -hmm. relaxed and you can feel the tingling. It's almost like more subtle, but throughout. Yeah. 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 It's very yeah. fascinating. Yeah. yeah. That's how it feels. That's how you feel too. Yes. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah so Oprah is <laughs> sharing their vibration, our vibration with you. Mm -hmm. Source is always beaming that vibration at you at all times but mm -hmm. we have all these i think of them as umbrellas that we put up all these self-limiting beliefs or you know previous opinions or habits or whatever it is mm -hmm. and because you know you and the ramona human are looking <laughs> right into each other's eyes there's mm -hmm. there's a there's a channel i think that's probably where the word came from right there's a channel that's kind of mutually agreed upon and they're able to kind of beam really great vibes at you in a way that you can absorb a little bit better and they're doing the same to me in a way that i can absorb it better than i could before because it's always it's always there but until you've actually experienced it at least you know maybe even a couple of times we mm -hmm. don't necessarily know how to access it because we've forgotten we were born knowing how to access it but we've forgotten so yeah that's why it's uh i just feel like it's really helpful so i'm glad you enjoyed it yeah i really loved it um and it's, it's different than, it, I think I've experienced this type of thing because I've seen different channels in the past and, and, and I recognize that feeling. So I know when it's the real deal. <laughs> it's the cool. real deal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your body always knows. Your feelings will always tell you anything, whether it's mm -hmm. a channel or, or the time to buy a house or whether right. a new friend is, you know, representing themselves well or, you know, whatever it is. Your feelings will always tell you when's the real deal. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you for deciding to do this and being a you channel. You're very welcome. Thank and, you so much. And, and helping so many people work through, you know, especially those things, like you said, they've, they've done the work, they're there, they've done a lot of the law of attraction and, and worked on themselves, but there's still some things that need addressed. And I could see how this can help them out. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I appreciate that. So what is the name of your website so people can get a hold of you? It's really tough. It's RamonaGailey.com. <laughs> <laughs> RamonaGailey.com. And then Ramona you're, are you Gailey. on Facebook too? On... Yep. Ramona Gailey comma um, okay. channel is the Facebook page. Okay. And uh, then there's YouTube. Again, it's Ramona Gailey channel is the YouTube. And, but if you can get all those links, if you just go to RamonaGailey.com. So. All right. And then you'll let everybody know when your course is coming out. Absolutely. And... It'll be announced on the, uh, on the page and in the uh, on the website yeah i don't know if it'll be announced on youtube but yeah and so i i was looking uh looking at some of your youtube videos with um oprah speaking and um i noticed the energy from that as well so if people want that feel that energy i would highly recommend watching the youtube videos yeah, we get a lot of feedback that the uh, people have found themselves, when they're watching, they can really feel the vibration as if they were there with the one asking the question and getting the answer. And so that's the, you know, the miracle of modern technology. So anytime I have um, a client who's willing to, to let me publish their, at least some part of their session, mm -hmm. I put it out there. Um, and actually, I'm really far behind on that. I've got <laughs> probably like 50 videos, but uh, it's a lot, it takes a long time to edit them. But yeah, yeah so we, we put those out. I put those out on a regular basis and um, encourage people to, to check it out. Yeah, so I'll be putting the videos up on Facebook, on YouTube, and um, so that everybody can experience Oprah, of course. And I'll probably put out snippets so it's easier for people to watch too. Okay. Um, but the full interview will be on, on uh, Pause About Loud. And, Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so, so thank much. you so much for joining us, for being here. And thank you, It's my honor. And, and I really enjoyed your energy. And thank you so much. All right. You have a wonderful day. Thanks. You too. All right.